Friends, have you ever think that why Na is known as sodium, K is known as potassium, Li is known as lithium, C is known as carbon, and if these elements have their own name, then why the elements with atomic number greater than 100 don't have their name? What is the reason behind this? And if we uh, see the name of those elements means the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100, a very unique name was there, like a symbol, like a, a unique name is there. So what is the reason behind this? We'll study in this video. So in this video, we'll talk about the IUPAC nomenclature of the elements with atomic number greater than 100. And I'll also tell you that how we can predict the period, group and block of an element by looking its electronic configuration. So there is a trick which help you to predict the period, group and block of any element very easily. So don't forget to see the whole video. So without any delay, let's get started. So students, if we talk about the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100, these elements are first of all known as heavy metals. Why these are known as heavy metals? Because they have a very uh, heavy molecular mass. They are very heavy in their weight. That's why they are known as heavy metals. So name and symbols are also assigned for these elements. Name and symbol have also been assigned for these symbols these elements but the name and symbol of these elements was not universally accepted by all the scientists and in uh, some elements if we talk about some elements some elements have been assigned by more than one name for example if I talk about the element whose atomic number is 104 now both American and the Soviet scientists, both American and the Soviet scientists claimed the discovery of this element and according to which the American scientist, the American scientist name is that Rutherfordium, named this element as Rutherfordium, whereas the Soviet scientist, the Soviet scientist named this element as Kurchevodium, Kurchetovium. So now the question is out of these two elements which element we will publish in our periodic table. So it is a difficulty for uh, for uh, uh, particular for determining the name of a particular element. Similarly if I talk about the element whose atomic number is 107 then this element has been assigned by two names. The two names are Niels Borium, Niels Borium or simply Borium, Niels Borium or simply Borium. So because of these difficulty, what is first difficulty? That the names are not universally accepted by all the scientists. And what is second difficulty? That we have more than one name for a particular element. Because of all these difficulties, IUPAC in 1994 appointed a commission to suggest the rational system of the nomenclature for elements with Z uh, with atomic number greater than 100. Clear? What? What is our topic? Today's topic is IUPAC nomenclature of elements having atomic number greater than 100. This is our today's topic. Clear? So because of these difficulties, because of these difficulties, IUPAC in 1994, IUPAC in 1994 appointed a commission and what is the role of this commission? The role of this commission to suggest a rationalized system, to suggest a rationalized system of the nomenclature of the elements with, uh, having atomic number greater than 100. After 1994, a lot of discussion, uh, lot of discussion occurred between the scientists. After having discussion with the chemist, after having discussion with the chemist, 
IUPAC in 1997. IUPAC in 1997. What's uh, IUPAC in 1997 suggested a systematic nomenclature. Suggested a systematic nomenclature for naming the elements. Uh, for naming the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100. For naming the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100 and this is known as means at 1997 IUPAC uh, fixed some rules for naming the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100. Now according to IUPAC the name of the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100 entirely means directly derived from their atomic number means we will not, uh, we'll not give any name to those elements. The name of those elements are directly derived by using their atomic numbers and by using or by fixing some root words for the numbers 0 to 9 and then adding a suffix ium, we get the name of those elements. So how we get the name of those elements? First of all, by using their atomic number. In their atomic number, whatever number we have, IUPAC fix some root words for those numbers and when we write those numbers, then we'll add a suffix in those, num uh, those wo root words that is IUM and at last we get the name of the IUP, uh, name of the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100. So we'll study now what are those root words which are fixed by the IUPAC in 1997. Now these root words are for are for the numbers starting from 0 up to 9. So here I'll write numbers and here I'll write root words and here the symbol. Here the symbol. So first of all, if I talk about the first number that is 0, the root word for this is nil. And the symbol is N. The symbol is N. If I talk about the second number, it is UN and U. 2, BY and B. 3, TRY and T. 4, QUET and Q. 5, PENT and P. 6, HEX and HEAD. Hex and H, 7, Sept, S, 8, Oct, O, and 9, N, and E. So these are the root words which are fixed by the IUPAC to write the name of the elements whose atomic number is greater than 100. And after writing these root words, we'll write, we'll add a suffix that is I-U-M. So, have you noted down this? Now we'll write the name of certain elements. Now we'll write the name of certain elements. Suppose I have to write the name of the very first element having atomic number 101. After 100 we have, after 100 we have the element whose atomic number is 101. So, Z equals to 101. Now, what IUPAC said? IUPAC said that the name of these elements was directly derived from their atomic number. So, we have to use the atomic number for writing the name of this element. So, it is, first one is 1, the number is 1. And if, uh, if it is there in your uh, front that whatever table which we have studied that you have noted down in your notebook. So look at it uh, in your notebook that for one we'll use un. Clear? And in while writing the name the first alphabet of the name should be capital. So un then zero. Zero means zero means nil. Zero means nil. Then again one means UN and then I let IUN. So my name is Anil Aniam. My name is Anil Aniam. And if I talk about the symbol, first one, the symbol is U. Now here also the symbol, the first symbol becomes capital. 
first one is u second one is n and third one is also u so the symbol becomes u n u now if i talk about z equals to 104 z equals to 104 so it becomes un 0 nil 4 where be and its symbol becomes u n q now if you saw in your periodic table in 101 we have a name that is mendelevium mendelevium we have so if we have the name mendelevium why we are writing this because the name of 101th element was officially announced means we have to write these name till then the official name of that particular element is announced by the iups clear we have to write the name of these elements the name of any elements according to this method till then the official name of that particular element was not announced as soon as the name of the element was announced by the iupac or by any other scientist by any other country then we will not write the name of that element with this symbol though it is correct but its original name is mendelevium similarly if i talk about 102nd element means whose atomic number is whose atomic number is 102 whose atomic number is 102 so it's uh, if it uh, if i'll write the name according to the iupac nomenclature it becomes un nil bm un nil bm because you un nil by and the symbol becomes un b but in our periodic table we have a different name for 102 element and that is nobelium that is nobelium For hundred and fourth, we have Rutherfordium. We have Rutherfordium. So it means that till the date, if the official name is not announced by any of the country, any of the scientists, then you will write the name of that particular element by using these rules. but as soon as the name announced as soon as the element got the official name then the element was known by that particular name so this is the iupac nomenclature of the elements with atomic number greater than 100 so there is a homework for you you uh, write all the name according to the iupac nomenclature of the elements ranging from 105 to 120 by using the root words and the suffix and give your answer in the comment section clear what you have to do you have to write the name of the elements having atomic number from 105 to 120 by using the iupac nomenclature means by using the root words and the suffix that is ium and also you have to write the symbol and show me your uh, in a uh, uh, send me your answer in the comment box now we'll move to our next topic that how we'll predict the period group and the block of any element for this we will solve one question here is our question now before solving this question i told you that i'll give you some trick through which you can easily predict that to which period to which group and to which block the element belong now if i have an uh, one thing i made to clear that before doing this trick you have to know that how to write the electronic configuration of any element if you don't know that how to write the electronic configuration of any element then the trick is not useful for you so first of all if i talk about the period if i talk about the period if i have to predict the period of any element first of all i'll write the electronic configuration of that particular element and then i'll see the last principal shell if the last principal shell is 3 then the period is third if the last principal shell is 6 then the period is 6 i am not talking about the 
लास्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन फिलिंग इन विच ऑर्बिटर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द लास्ट प्रिंसिपल शेल आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द लास्ट प्रिंसिपल शेल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द जनरल कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ द डी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट इन विच वी स्टडीड दैट एन माइनस वन डी वन टू टेन एंड एन एस वन टू टू we have this general electronic configuration for d block element in this though the out though the coming electron will enter in d1 so though the coming electron will enter in d orbital but our principal valence shell is n not n minus 1 our principal valence shell is n so for period we have to see the principal valence uh, valence shell of that particular electronic configuration and if it is 1 then the period is 1 if it is 2 then the period is 2 if it is 3 then the period is 3 so period uh, detection period prediction is very easy by uh, uh, by with the help of the principal principal valence shell principal valence shell now if i talk about group if i talk about group so group we can predict how we can predict by predicting the block of any element we can predict the group of any element with the help of the block of that particular element now how will predict the block if the out if the last electron will enter in s orbital now for block we have to focus on the last electron for period we have to focus on the last principal shell for block we have to focus on the last electron last coming electron if the last coming electron is entering in the s orbital then the block is s block if the last electron is entering in the well uh, outermost p orbital then it is p block if the valence uh, if the valence electron means the outermost electron will enter in the penultimate d subshell penultimate d subshell or penultimate d orbital means that n minus 1 d penultimate d orbital then it is d block and if the last electron will enter in the anti penultimate f orbital then it is f block so if the electron enters in the s orbital then it is s block and for s block the prediction of group is very 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 easy the number of electrons which are present in the outermost s orbital the number of electrons which are present in the outermost s orbital that number is the group number if s1 means in configuration if we have s1 means the group is 1 if we have s2 then the configuration is 2 so number of electrons with the help of the number of electrons in outermost outermost s orbital we can predict the group number for s block elements and how we get to know that the element belongs to s block because the outermost uh, because the outermost electron or the last electron will enter in the s block so by uh, knowing the number of the electron in the outermost s orbital we can predict the group number for s block elements now for p block elements for p block elements by knowing the number of electrons in the outermost outermost valence shell valence shell why i am talking about outermost valence shell because in our previous video we have studied that for p block elements the general electronic configuration is ns2 np 1 to 6 means along with np we also get ns along with np we also get ns so this form the outermost valence shell so the number of electrons in the outermost valence shell is equal to the group number of p block elements if suppose it is s2 and p3 so the total number of electrons are 5 and similarly Uh, and uh, at the same time we have to add one up one digit here and that digit is 10 so by adding 10 with the total number of electron present in the outermost valence shell we get the 
ग्रुप नंबर ऑफ पी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट सो हेयर द टोटल नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर फाइव फाइव प्लस टेन सो दिस एलिमेंट बिलोंग्स टू फिफ्टीन एलिमेंट फिफ्टीन ग्रुप वट एवर बी द एलिमेंट वी डोंट नो द एलिमेंट I am just assuming that the configuration is s two p three. So total number of electron in valence shell becomes five. Now I add ten, so it becomes fifteen. So the group number becomes fifteen. So in p block, if we have to predict the group, we'll calculate the number of electrons in the valence shell, and then we'll we'll add ten on that number. The the number becomes the group number of the p block element. If I talk about the p block. If I talk about the d block, in d block the sum of number of electron in the penultimate penultimate d orbital and valence orbital valence orbital. Just uh, before. This topic we will write the general electronic. We have written the general electronic configuration of d block, and we uh, wrote that n minus one d one to ten to n s one to two. So there we have one penultimate shell and one valence shell. So we have to add the number of electron in both the orbitals present, and by adding the number of electron in both the orbitals. We get the group number for d block. Suppose if I have configuration d one s two. Suppose I have this configuration d one s two. So my group number becomes three. My group number becomes three. I'll add one plus two. That is equals to three. So with the help of this trick, you can easily predict the period, group, and block of any element. Now we'll solve this question. Now we'll solve this. Question A. If I talk about A, its atomic number is nine. So first of all, I have to write the electronic configuration, and we'll write the electronic configuration with the help of three rules which we have studied in our previous chapter. So one s two, two s two, two p. How many? How many uh, electrons are left? Here it is two four. So how many electrons are left? Five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the configuration becomes this. Means now the outermost principal shell means the principal valence shell is second. So the period is second. Period is second. Now block the last electron will enter in. P orbital is entering in the p orbital. That's why it belongs to p block. Now, because it belongs to p block, in p p block, what we have written, we have to add ten with the number of the electrons in the outermost shell. So the number of electrons in the outermost shell are seven. So ten plus seven that is equals to seventeenth group. So the group is seventeen. Period is second because of principal valence shell and because last electron uh, is entering in p orbital. That's why it is p block. And in p block, we uh, we can find the group by adding the number of valence electron with ten. So it belongs to seventeenth group. Similarly, if I talk about b, if I talk about b, b atomic number is twelve. So one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two. So the principal valence shell is third. So the period is period is third, and the last electron is entering in s orbital. So the group is sorry, the block is block is s block, and for s block we know that by with the help of the number of the electrons present in the Outermost s orbital, we can predict the group number. So in the outermost s orbital, I have two electron. So the group is second. Group is second. Now the third question, that is the C, whose atomic number is twenty nine. This is your homework. This is your homework. Solve it and tell me predict uh, predict the period, group, and block. 
for that particular element and give me your answer in the comment section. Now, D. If I talk about D, if I write the atom, uh, electronic configuration of D, it becomes 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now, after 3p, I have to fill full first 4s and then 3d. But I'll write here 3d 10 4s2. Though I'm writing here 3d 10 4s2, I'm writing 3d before 4s, but we have to fill 3d after 4s according to Abhav rule. So 3d 10 4s2, then also there is a space for electron 4p 6. After 4p, I have to fill what? 5s, not 4d. I don't have to fill 4d. I have to fill 5s, but I'll write here uh, 4d. 4d 10, 5s 2, 5p 6. Still 4f is not filled because the energy of 4f is even greater than 5p. So we'll uh, place it after 5p, after means after 5d. We'll place it after 5d. Now, this is the electronic configuration for D. This electronic configuration, it seems like a complex electronic configuration, but if you know Abhav rule, you can easily write this uh, electronic configuration. So, in this, the outermost electron is entering in the p orbital. So, the block is, block is p. And if I, talk, if I look the principal valence shell, this one is the principal valence shell. Fifth is the principal valence shell because this is the greatest number. Among all these, this is the greatest number. One, two, three, four, five. This is the greatest number. So this is my principal shell, valence shell. So the period is, the period is fifth. And if I talk about the group, now it is P block. So I have to first write 10. I'll write 10. And then the total number of electron in the valence shell, that is 8. So the group is 18. The group is 18. Clear? Now we will do the last part, that is E. Now because the atomic number of E is 58, so its electronic configuration is same till here, because it is 54. Now after this, I have to fill 6s. I will fill 6s, then 5d, and then 4f. Clear? So, in this, the block is f block. Why it is f block? Because the last electron is entering in f orbital. If I talk about period, now, if I see the greatest digit, this is not the greatest digit, greatest digit is here. So this is my principal valence shell. This is my principal valence shell. So the period is sixth. Period is sixth. And if I talk about the group, if we talk about F block, F block don't have their own group. But if in our, uh, in our question we have to write group, we'll write third group. For each and every F block element, we have to write third group because in, in our periodic table, if you have seen the periodic table, we have a separate place for lanthanoids and actinoids that is F block element. So F block don't have their own group in the periodic table, but still if we have to write in our question paper, still there is a question that to which group this element belongs. So it belongs to third group. Any F block element belongs to third group. So in this way, you can uh, predict the period, group and block of any element. And still I am waiting for this answer. So students, that's all for today. I hope you have learned the trick through which we, we can predict the period, group and block of any element and also that how we'll write the IUPAC nomenclature of the elements with atomic number greater than 100. I'll see you in my next video with new topics. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy.